In this video, we're going to focus on how to add multiple shapes and lines in the annotation plugin in Chart.js. So basically we have this, but if you've seen one of my videos here, for example, this one here, how do we create here, for example, we have this blue area, we have a line and we have the text. All right, so this is a, was a video where we really create from scratch. However, I can imagine, maybe you want to just do it with the annotation plugin, that will save you so much more time. All right. So how can we do this? Well, we have this here. Let's duplicate almost similar to this. And this is really what I uh, like of the annotation plugin. They have these border radius here. I don't have these here in my videos because it's a real mind twister to get these border radius. However, so I have big respect, a deep respect for them to how they make this so easy. So let's start to work on that and duplicate the same structure that we have there. All right. So we have this here so far. We have all of this information here. And now what I want to do here we're going to add a few items. First of all, I'm going to change this. I'm going to put it here somewhere up. So from 60 and above, it is a, uh, it will get this red area here. So what we're going to move here is we have this value here. The scale ID, this should be then on the Y value. And the moment we do this, we need to grab here, let's say from 60 and above. So I'm just going to say here value is 60. All right, save that. Now we have this, all right, so that is fine. And then we have the two hot, that is a rotated item here. So what we can say here, the rotation can be removed, or we don't need any rotation here. So if I save this here, there we are. All right, that's number one. So if you want to add up another line, basically in here, we have to create this as a duplication. We have to duplicate it again here. So this is the first line, let's see where it ends. There you are. So let me say your comma. Let me say your line number two. Now let's do line number two. And what I want to do with line number two, I just want to put in here the lower part. Everything here is too cold. And then eventually here will be red. So that's the only exercise we're going to do here. Applying multiple items together. So we say here the following. And we just we can copy almost everything here that we have above. The only thing that we'll have adjusted will be that our ID uh, well, this will be all same, but the value here will be lower, of course, will be number 20. So we're going to change it to number 20. And then we can say here border color. I'm going to grab different border colors here. And what I will do is I will get the second line here of this color here. Oh, this is supposed to be a blue, blue one, but apparently I changed this, of course, in the previous video. So what I'm going to do is just very simple here. I'm going to just give it my own blue color. All right, so how we will do this here? It's very straightforward. Uh, I realize that we have this background color, but a line doesn't have a background color. So I'm going to remove this background color. It's redundant. Same here. Doesn't need it here. This will be, I'll make this zero. This is RG and G stands for green. So we're going to put it zero. And then we say here, maybe number 200. All right. So we have this one. That will be a blue color. And then once we have that one here, we want to put a label as well. So the label here. And this label here will be in here. Then we say enabled, all right, which is true, is a Boolean value. Next, we say content, which will be basically the text. And this text could be here content uh, uh, to cold. And then comma here, we could get here the background color. Background color for now, very similar. I'm just going to grab this same color here. So it will be nice blue color as well. So if I save this right now and refresh, you will see now we have a nice red one and a nice solid blue color here. All right. So basically this is already done. So now we have our second line. Now what I want to do is I want to add up a box. So I'm going to put in a box here and we can say here box one or blue box, whatever we can say, or red block box in our case. And then here we're going to put in the following. So we say here, as we remember, we have to first indicate the type. Well, let's grab this here. We put it in here. And then we have these items here. We have this will be changed to box. Then here, we have the background color. I'm going to grab this background color, but I'm going to make it transparent. To make it a bit more transparent, I'm going to work with the alpha value here. Put in 0 0.2. All right. So next, what we need to do is we need to assign it. And the assigning here for the box is, of course, with the values, I guess this this one here as well. And let's uh, you see here min and max. We have all of these items here. All right, so exactly the same. But the only thing here with the min and max is 
we need to be very specific. So I'm going to just paste this in here, put it in there, and then I'm going to reassign or select here the items. All right, so where do we want to start? Well, we want to start here in this case at the very top. That's the value 90 on the Y scale, all down to 60. All right, so that's the first thing. So that's the Y scale. Minimum will be 60 then in this case, and the maximum value will be 90. Then what we need to do is from start till end, so from left to right in our case. So that would mean that we will start here at minus 0 0.5 or up to 6.5, which is in this case exactly correct. So if I save this now, we should see here a proper response. All right, so what do you see here and why is this suddenly becoming gray? So uh, this is the one that we need to make sure that uh, we remove and I guess I deleted it here unintentionally what it is is basically the value here I'm going to show you this specific value that should be I guess in the options by default let's look here and this is the item uh, where are you it's the true color or display color uh, auto colors this is the one here let's see if I can find auto colors anywhere here it doesn't show at all all right, doesn't show. All right, so the auto colors need to be removed. So what we're going to place it is basically where we're putting the auto colors is just by default in the plugins itself before the annotation loads. All right, so we have this here and it's apparently already set on false. So I'm going to check here what's going on or maybe we need to, to redo them here as well. All right, so I'm not expecting a double. So maybe we need to put it in here as well just to avoid it why is the auto colors now not responding or unexpectedly responding here so let me double check this quickly all right i already figured out it was not the auto colors it makes sense of course because let's look at this all right so what is really happening so you understand this as well so by default if the auto colors is on uh, is set on on a true what will happen is you get a default gray color and this is a default because it doesn't recognize any color here. So it will give us a default color and that is a dark gray. And this is why I thought auto colors, maybe I removed them. But no, that's not the case. So what is the issue here is we're working here with the background color. And let's look at here in our box one. What I did here was the border color. So that is, of course, not the suitable one. So we need to change it to background color because there is no border color here so far. And the, or if there might be, definitely the background color here is not working. So now if I refresh now and I save this of course with the background color correctly, then it works. So this is the reason why I set this. If I set this on true, you will understand why or what will happen here. Well, surprisingly, nothing happens. I would expect a gray color as well. That's the normal default. If I remove this, you will see here as well, that is normally how it responds. So apparently, it will have this, but we need to make sure that this is always false so it will not overrule any color because it's a solid dark blackish or grayish color so this is how we can do it we can do circles or a, or points or ellipse but to be honest those have no real value this is the best option here maybe a final exercise would be a final box at the bottom so we're going to add up another box here comma here we say here box number two all right and box number two here we have this all oh, this is fine this is fine so we're going to just change this to 0, 0. We make this blue to 100. This is already correct. And all we want to do here is from 0 up to 20. Zero, oh, sorry. This is 20 because this is max. And 0 is the minimum Y. Refresh. Do we have a comma here? All right. You can see I'm missing comma here. Save that and then refresh. There we are. So now we get this and I realize I put it in the uh, green value. That should be readjusted correctly. Let's readjust that one nicely to here and there we are. So now we have a hot and to cold option here, which is absolutely beautiful and it's quite simple. Basically, with this, it's quite simple and we almost duplicated, or basically we duplicated this as well, just with a nicer version here in the tooltip with a nice surrounding here with border radius as well. So that is basically everything you need to know with the annotation plugin. I'm sure there's more, there's an update coming, or at least they're still working for some extra updates, but right now it is not yet, and they indicated that there are still two parts to be introduced soon.